Happy Sabbath, Church family. I trust you had a good week and will enjoy a blessed Sabbath. For those on holiday, I hope you enjoy the time together with your families after a very challenging year. Today's topic is titled, Love Your Neighbor as Yourself, and it's based on Mark 12, verse 31. But before we start, let's open with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Thank you for carrying us through this week. Thank you for another Sabbath day where we can fellowship together and spend time in your word. I pray that as we go through this special day, we apply the lessons we learn today to our daily lives and draw ever closer to you. I pray for safe traveling mercies for those on the road and that they reach their destination safely. I pray that we might all meet up again in the new year refreshed and ready to share your word and love with others. I ask this in your holy name. Amen. So if you've heard of Jesus, you probably know about one of his famous teachings called the Golden Rule. Do to others what you would want them to do to you. And this, actually, is a restatement of something else that Jesus said, that the meaning of life is to love God and love your neighbor as yourself. Now, that's really beautiful, but what does he mean exactly by the word love? It's an unclear word in English, because you can love your mom and you can love pizza. And if the word love means the same thing in both of those cases, your mom's going to feel real bad. So what did Jesus mean in his language? Well, first of all, this love your neighbor phrase is a quotation from the Hebrew scriptures, where the word for love is ahava. However, the language Jesus spoke and taught in from day to day, it was a cousin language of Hebrew, that is Aramaic, in which the word for love is rachma. But then, as Jesus' followers spread his teachings around the world, they translated them into Greek using the word agape. But here's what's fascinating. The earliest followers of Jesus who wrote the books of the New Testament in Greek, they didn't learn the meaning of agape by looking it up in ancient dictionaries. Rather, they looked to the teachings of Jesus and the story of his life to redefine their very concept of love. So one time, Jesus was asked about the most important command in the Jewish scriptures. And he first quoted from the ancient prayer in the Torah called the Shema. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart. So love for God is the most important thing. But then Jesus quickly followed up by saying another command from the Torah was also the most important, to love your neighbor as yourself. So which is the most important, loving God or loving your neighbor? Jesus' answer is yes. To ask the question means you don't get his point. For Jesus, they are two sides of the same coin. Your love for God will be expressed by your love for people and vice versa, they're inseparable. And so this makes it clear that for Jesus, agape love is not primarily a feeling for someone else that happens to you, like our phrase, I fell in love. For Jesus, love is action. It's a choice that you make to seek the well-being of people other than yourself. Jesus also went on to teach that genuine love for God and others means seeking people's well-being without expecting anything in return, especially from people who are in difficult situations who can't repay you even if they wanted to. According to Jesus, this kind of generous love reflects the very heartbeat of God. And he took this even further. Jesus said that the ultimate standard of authentic love is how well you treat the person that you can't stand. Or in his words, you shall love your enemy and do good to them, expecting nothing nothing in return. For Jesus, this kind of enemy embracing love imitates the very character of God himself. Now we wouldn't be talking about Jesus still today if he had only said things like love your enemy. This is how he actually lived. Jesus was constantly helping and serving the people around him in very practical and tangible ways. And he consistently moved towards poor and hurting people who couldn't benefit him in return. He showed love for the forgotten ones, the people who usually fall through the cracks. And when Jesus eventually marched into Jerusalem, he made himself an enemy of the leaders of his people by accusing them of hypocrisy and corruption. But then instead of attacking his enemies to overthrow them, he allowed them to kill him. Jesus died for the selfishness and corruption of his enemies because he loved them. After Easter morning, Jesus and then his followers claimed that it was the power of God's love for the world that was revealed in Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. As the Apostle Paul put it, God demonstrated his own agape for us in this. While we were still sinners, the Messiah died for us. 
Or in the words of the Apostle John, God's own agape was revealed when he sent his one and only son into the world so that through him we could have life. And for John, then, this leads naturally to the conclusion, beloved ones, if that's how God has loved us, then we ought to show love for one another. So Christian faith involves trusting that at the center of the universe is a being overflowing with love for his world, which means that the purpose of human existence is to receive this love that has come to us in Jesus and then to give it back out to others, creating an ecosystem of others-focused, self-giving love. And that's the New Testament meaning of agape love. After nearly 65 years without much growth, the members of the Puli Seventh-day Adventist Church in Taiwan knew they needed to try something different. In the past, they took a casual approach to outreach activities. This usually meant hanging a poster on the wall to announce an event and hoping church members would show up. Time and time again, almost no one showed up. In 2016, church leaders called upon the members to brainstorm new ways to connect with the community. Church members caught the vision and decided that health education was a major need in their town. They began mingling and developing relationships with their neighbors. At the local community center, they started hosting exercise classes. They even established a five-day camp for children to attend during the winter and summer holidays. About 20 kids attended each time. In 2018, the church collaborated with the Health Promotion Department of Taiwan Adventist College and developed the Health 100 course, which promotes a holistic approach to health. Cooking classes, therapeutic massage workshops, and other events have blessed many people in Puli. 
People's health was improving as a result of these efforts, but church members wanted to do more. They created an after-school reading class for disadvantaged families. The church has helped 12 children from six families improve their reading skills. English classes and music classes have been very popular with about 20 students. The church quickly transformed from a building used once a week into an active urban center of influence. There's demand for more classes, but there isn't room. Church members in Puli pray for a new space to offer more classes and workshops. They have plans to continue expanding their ministry. Through Christ Method, they went from being a church with no growth to an influential voice in the community. This quarter, the 13th Sabbath offering will help build three new urban centers of influence in Taiwan. Your contribution will make a difference in the lives of people across this territory.